Here are the steps that we need to take in order to solve by using the square root property. The first step is to isolate the square. Now the square may be just x squared, but it may also be a quantity squared, say like x plus 2 quantity squared. Isolate the square, then you apply the square root property. Don't forget the plus or minus. After you've applied the square root property, you've kind of broken it down a level. You've probably brought the x out into a place where you can finally isolate that so that you can solve the equation. Uh, let's take this guy for example. I have x squared minus 5 equals 45. Now at first glance you may look at this and see, okay I've got a square, it's quadratic, let's get everything to one side. You can go ahead and try to do that but it's not going to help you because this guy does not factor using nice integer values. Instead follow the steps. Isolate the square. Your square is this guy right here, it's the x squared. So to isolate this guy, we're going to add 5 to both sides of the equation. So now we have x squared equals 50. And now this is where we want to apply the square root property. When we apply the square root property, we are doing this. We are taking the square root of both the left and the right side of the equation. Now remember, when you take the square root, you have to do your plus or minus. If you don't, you're going to be wrong. So, that leaves us with x is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 50, you're going to have to break this guy down. We know that 50 breaks down to be 25 times 2. So the square root of 25 is going to give me 5 outside of the radical, and then we have a 2 that's left inside the radical. So these are your two solutions, x equals plus or minus 5 squared root of 2. We isolated the radical in the first step. We applied the square root property. Don't forget your plus or minus, and then we just simplify the radical. So here are our two answers. Now it is perfectly acceptable for you to leave your answers as x equals plus or minus 5 squared root of 2. You may also see it written like this. You may see them use set notation with the curly braces like this and say negative 5 squared root of 2 and the other solution 5 squared root of 2. Both of these answers are acceptable. This is written as x equals, and this other one is written in what we call set builder notation, where you list each of your solutions. So I, again, I don't care how you write this. You're probably going to see this on your final exam. That's the form they would use. All right, let's see what you guys can do with this example. This is one that always seems to mess up people. 2x squared plus 18 equals 0. Now according to the steps that we already wrote, uh, we said the first step is to isolate the square. So your square is this guy right here, it's the x squared. Notice that the 2 is a coefficient. He is not being squared. So you need to get this x squared totally by itself. Now I hope that we can do this without actually showing every single little step. So 2x equals negative 18, but don't take the square root of both sides yet. You still have to get the x squared by itself. So divide both sides by 2 and you have x squared is equal to negative 9. Now that we have the x squared totally by itself, this is where you apply the square root property. So, you take the square root of both the left and the right side. Remember, of course, 
your plus or minus. We need the plus or minus. Why? So we get our two solutions here. So on the left side we have x, and on the right side we have plus or minus. We just went over this. The square root of 9 is going to give you 3, but since you've got the negative, that's going to make this 3i. So x equals plus or minus 3i. So now we've got some things to worry about. We finally have solutions to an equation, and they're not real numbers. Sometimes we can have imaginary or uh, complex solutions to our equation. If you look here, using just real numbers, anything squared is going to be positive, times a positive is still positive, and then plus 18. Everything here should be positive, so there's no way you would ever get to zero. But if you plug in the i and you square that, you're going to get negatives, and so that's going to be able to balance things out and get back to your zero. So, watch out for this. We can have imaginary solutions. Okay, let's try one more of these problems. Nineteen minus x squared equals forty-seven. Again, following the steps we've talked about for solving the square root property at the very beginning of this video, the first thing you need to do is isolate the square. So, here's your square and we need to isolate him. So first things first, get rid of the 19. So subtract 19 on both sides. That leaves me with a negative x squared equals 28. But you know that this is not good enough because I don't want negative x squared. I want just plain x squared. So in order to accomplish that, we will divide both sides by the negative 1. And that's going to give me x squared equals negative 28. Now I'm creating a little bit of a space here because we know that we need to you know, do the square root of both sides. So apply the square root property to both sides of the equation. And we're going to get the plus or minus. Now we just need to finish solving this guy. So x is equal to plus or minus. So this guy can be kind of difficult. 28 is not a perfect square, so we need to break this guy down. 28 will break down to be 4 times 7. 4, of course, being a perfect square. That's going to give you the 2. But you also have this guy right here. So the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of the negative is going to come out as the i. And the only guy who can't come out is the 7. Not so lucky now, are you? So not only do we have an imaginary solution, we also have a radical with this. So yeah, some of these guys can be kind of ugly, but Take your time, watch your signs, and you're going to be okay.